Hi and welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this week a little bit different we're going to be reviewing a performance. So I've just been to see Dynamo's new show Times Are Gone for Honest Men. So we got a, uh, a review of that and a little review of the deck of cards that the Abandoned Room have put out as well. So first of all a couple of announcements. A lot of people have said what is this Vanish and Ink thing? You're going to be doing these reviews now in association with Vanish and Ink. Is it going to be biased? Are you going to be doing Vanish and Ink stuff only? And are you going to say it's all really good? Uh, no, no, no. This is um, really nothing's changing at all about this review. Okay, It is how it is. It's self-contained. I make it myself. Vanish and Ink has very kindly offered um, to share it with a wider audience and to get me some, some newer stuff to review. So if you want me to review stuff, still send it to me. Literally nothing has changed, but they made me a lovely graphic to go at the beginning, which is nice, isn't it? Uh, so there you go. If you want to know more about it, I'll put a link to the podcast I recorded with them below. The other thing is, can you please like and subscribe and, uh, that, and press the little bell because then you'll get the notifications. Makes all the difference. And go and check out my online card magic course if you want to take your card magic to a next level. Uh, this is all the moves you're ever going to need. Uh, I add more to them every week. We're adding tricks. There's a theory, co the theory courses on there. Uh, so any questions about that, do as well. Email me if you want, steve at stevefalkner.com or comment below. But let's get on with the review of this show. So a little bit of background. Dynamo and his team opened up the Abandon Room, this intimate sort of exclusive venue in the Mandrake Hotel uh, with his show that we're going to review now, Times Are Gone for Honest Men. And the idea is now, apparently, for this venue to be a kind of showcase for, for acts that the public wouldn't usually see. So Rob Zabrecki's coming over in May, and obviously other magicians have heard of him, but uh, that's his first time he's done a run run over in London. So it's, so it's quite exciting, really, because if you're like me, I mean, I you know, went to see Dynamo's Arena show, and it was great, and I love seeing anything big, uh, large scale, but I do think, for me, magic works mostly on an intimate level. So we need more venues like this. So... So this is great news and now Dynamo is touring, he's doing a small tour with this same show and the same kind of sense of exclusivity. Um, so it's still a small venue, it still tends to be in a nice hotel. So I went to the, to the Lowry Hotel in Manchester to see this. So when you walk in, the good news is I was expecting it because it was in the Lowry Hotel. I was worried it was just going to be in like a big boardroom, you know, because it's an intimate venue, 150 seater, and I thought it might be a bit sterile. But the, the good news is obviously they thought of that. Uh, they've created a venue within a venue, really. So you walk in and it's almost like you walk into another bit and they've designed this area, this space, this performing space that makes you feel like you're somewhere else, uh, which is a really good thing. The, the feeling in there when you get in there is of... You know, with the music and the design, it's got this kind of dark, edgy feel, and it's it's kind of that something's not quite right, that that something is amiss, and that theme continues throughout the show. You know, we've got Dynamo doing the tricks, and I'm not going to go into what the tricks are. I'm not going to go into each routine because I think that will completely ruin it. But all I say is the magic is strong, it's varied, and it has this slightly edgy feel most of it, as does the show. Now, it doesn't mean it's a dark show. There's lots of there's moments of light in it. Um, but it is, you know, things aren't quite right and they haven't been quite right. You know, Dynamo's been through this few years, actually a lifetime of, of pain and with, with his condition. So that is reflected in the show and he talks openly about that. The show opens in an intimate way. And I don't, so, you know, when you see an intimate venue, sometimes you think it's just going to be the same sort of show, but in a smaller venue. It's really not. It's not just intimate in the in the size of the venue it's intimate in the the choice of routines the routines are strong but they're quite low key some of them what i really liked is that the opening of the show is not a kind of big da -da, and i was hope sort of half expecting that to happen you've got this intro to start before dynamo's on stage and then lights come up and he's sitting at a table and he starts talking and i really like that i like the fact that straight away it felt like something different it felt like a different beast really from this whole arena stuff and the TV stuff that he was doing. So there's a lot to like about this. I like this atmosphere. I love the feel of the show. I love the feel of intimacy, like I've said. Uh, and it was also really nice to see him go off script a few times. It is a very scripted show and that's understandable. It's got to be, you know, it run, it comes in at 70 minutes and 70 minutes bang on as well. But it was nice to see him come off script and those moments where, you know, where you see someone do something scripted and then they sort of ad lib a little bit and it's, ge it's a genuinely funny ad lib. It just brings a moment of lightness and everybody laughs. And you had those real, those genuine laughs that came out, which I haven't really experienced with, with Dynamo's show before, where I kind of felt relaxed and felt comfortable. And that's not easy in an intimate setting. You know, I actually think a bigger audience is a lot easier to play, I've always found. 
an intimate is like you there's nowhere to hide there it really is you really are vulnerable and when you're mixing that with talking about these aspects of your life you know it could go either way and i was thinking it could have been really awkward you don't you almost want to have that distance um with some magic shows especially but but straight away i felt comfortable the, the script wasn't you know, scripts are hard when you're talking about your life because it can come across really ultra scripted. And I think there was a couple of moments like that, but but mostly I felt like I was I was listening to someone speaking from the heart. Uh, so straight away, that is a good thing, important in a show like this because you don't. I didn't really want it to be trick after trick after trick after trick, and it genuinely isn't. I also liked the chemistry with the volunteers and the people that came up to help. And again, it sounds like a no-brainer, but most people tend not to be that good at this. And, and there, was, there was an authenticity to it as well. Like, for example, there was a moment where, where Dynamo said, oh, yeah, you're, you're the kid that came to my book signing the other day. How are you doing? And all that. So it, so it kind of felt like he cared about the people that were on stage with him. Some people were on stage for quite some time, so that was really important. There was a couple of moments, I think, where there was a few issues with some of the tricks, but they were covered really, really well, and it meant that that person was on stage for a bit longer than they should have been. And again, loads of respect there, and it didn't feel like people were just being props, which we do sometimes see. There was a real... You kind of liked him, and, and I know we like him anyway, because that's what he does, and that's why people going to go and see him, especially non-magicians that are fans. But again, in that intimate setting, that's really important, that you really warm to that person. And the story is interesting, isn't it? You know, yes, most of us have heard it before, but not the details. And, and when he was talking about it, I was enthralled. But importantly, the show, it had a, a beginning, middle and an end. And by the end, it did build up script-wise to, to something that was, I felt quite moved by it, which I wasn't expecting. And, and there was a really, really positive you know, lovely message. And for someone like me, I like stuff like that, I mean, personal development and all that kind of stuff. So, it, and it felt like a genuine positive message at the end of the show, which I thought finished really well in that respect. Um, but it's not a perfect show. And, you know, nor do we expect it to be. It, the, the, for me, there was, it, it, it followed a set rhythm, really. And that's all I can say. It's hard to, how to describe it there could have been some breaks in rhythm every now and then it felt like it went at a, a steady pace and a good pace um and you know the script wasn't rushed there wasn't any kind of really awkwardness like that but i could have done with a little bit of up and down to me it felt like it was kind of on the same way so not that i wanted a big illusion or anything like that but maybe maybe one routine that was a little bit funnier and, and it's hard to you know because i don't mean it should be like da, 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 da. you know it's not that sort of thing but you know, a, a little bit of break in pace would have been nice. And the magic, you know, for a magician, if you're going to magician and you think you're going to go and see something that is going to completely blow you away and go, how the hell? It's not really that. This is the show for non-magicians, and as it should be, you know. But I will say that I think I gained a lot from this show. Yes, most of the tricks, you know, nothing new there really for me, but the presentation-wise there was. But also I get inspired by seeing a show and I get inspired by seeing, you know, when you, th you know that things aren't going quite so well in certain bits and you see how it's handled and it gives you that confidence really. Because when I perform, I still, you know, I still beat myself up if anything goes wrong and I get so worried about the slightest little thing. And I think actually you see that and you go, actually, if you handle it well, it's all right. You know, so, so in that respect, yes, one of the bad points you could say was a couple of things didn't go so well, but that's a magic show and that's going to happen. The good part of that is what you, what you observe and what you learn and, and how professionally it was dealt with. And obviously he's had a lot of practice at that. I don't, I don't mean he's had a lot of practice because things always go wrong. I mean, he's done a load of shows by now. That's, that's what I mean. So there, there's a really nice bit at the end after the last trick, which I really liked. And I suppose I could have done with that being a bit longer, a bit more stretched out and to have a bit more, it kind of seemed to kind of, oh, oh, uh, and then I wanted more of that, which isn't a bad thing, leave them wanting more, um, but I could have done with a little bit more of a feeling of, of finale right at the end there. Uh, and there's the price point, okay? This is not um, an inexpensive night out. Now it is, a, I think it's cheaper to go when it's on tour because the tickets at the abandoned room are more expensive, but I think you get more there. You, I think you get like canapes and it's kind of a bit of a, a kind of, don't quote me on that because I haven't been. Um, but, but obviously it's a permanent room, so it's going to feel a bit different. This, you know, the, the, and I got a review ticket, so I'll be totally honest, I didn't pay for the ticket, so thank you very much for that. Um, but would I have been happy paying 85 quid for this if it wasn't Dynamo? And if I went to a, someone I'd never heard of, saw this show, paid 85, 
Probably not, because it's Dynamo, but that is what you're paying for, isn't it? You know, you're paying to see Dynamo in an intimate setting, and that's part of the excitement, that's part of what you're doing, and, and apparently the, the Brecky tickets are, are a, a, a bit cheaper, so well, quite a lot cheaper, so, you know, that is reflected in the price. So it, it didn't have a show, I wouldn't say it blew me away, I wasn't floored with it, but I'm a magician, it got a standing ovation, and my daughter was with me and she was absolutely blown away. She's seen quite a lot of magic. She hasn't seen a lot of magic shows, but she she loved all the tricks. She didn't notice anything that didn't go quite right. And she, she had a great time and that's a lot. My daughter's 14 years old, right? So as a summary, I, I did really enjoy this. I had a great, I do recommend going to see it. You'll get inspired by by how you can use style and design to make things feel a bit different. Uh, I think it is a really good opportunity to see Dynamo with a small number of people in an intimate setting like that. It's really, really memorable. And what I've really enjoyed is seeing the progression of this career. Let's not underestimate this. Th this is someone that's gone from, you know, being at the magic conventions that we used to see, doing his, his body popping and his fibble cuts, to getting a TV show, putting all that work in, to then doing an arena show, which I thought was ballsy as hell, I think, you you know, because it's easy, you know, if I go and do a corporate and die on my ass, that's fine, but you, you're taking huge risks there and it takes a lot of courage because if you've got a reputation to uphold and then you're doing something different, that things could go badly wrong. Um, so you do that and that was successful and then this other thing, this intimate show as well, there's so much opportunity for this not to work and I think, again, the courage it takes to do this, to go for that period of illness and then come out and do something that's more within you know, that energy level that he can sustain is is something to be really sort of applauded, I think, whatever you think of, of, of the magic or, or, or that. So I, I just, you know, I, yes, I love the show. show was great fun. It was flawed. But just to be in that room and see that at the end of all the last few years is a really good opportunity. So I do recommend you go and see it. Um, but also, I want to talk about these. So here's the abandoned room cards. Okay, we've got this really, look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? So if you're a card collector, it's going to look nice on your shelf with, with the other 500 that you've got. Uh, like I said, there's only 2,000 of these printed. These are the Carter Monday B9 uh, True Linen Finish. These are available at the gigs, and uh, you can also get them at the Abandoned Room website. I'll put the links below. I think they were kind of like 15, 17 euros. That's, that's 15 quid, isn't it, on the website? Um, and again, you can buy them at the gigs, but they're a really, really, really nicely produced deck. So thanks very much for watching. Like I always say, please like and subscribe. Check out cardmagiccourse.com and get your cull download at cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull. And thanks a lot for Vanishing Inc. again for giving me this opportunity. Have a great one. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.